Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Yosef. Want to come back to you with another video today about considering the ways of the end. Now, for some of you that have read through the scriptures, of course, you have went through Proverbs, the book of wisdom, and uh, you've kind of skated through the past of scripture about considering the ways of the end, but, but really have not pondered on the significance of how important it is for us as believers of the Most High, Yah has chosen Kodesh people in these last days to be able to truly consider the ways of the end. All right, so I want to be able to share with you some scriptures today because if you do not know the times that we are in right now, things are ramp, they're moving fast, they're ramping up here, and things are happening seemingly like every single day. And uh, for those of us that are not considering the ways of the end, uh, we can be putting on ourselves a greater affliction um, than what's already already dished out for us. So let's go through the scriptures, though. Um, you know, I'm planning on this being a long message. I just want to give you something to put on your mind today about considering the ways of the end. So we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 6. And we're going to start at verse number 6, Mishlei. It said, Go to the end, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise. So this is another wisdom lesson, of course. And it says to consider the end. And if you consider the ways of the end, this is one of the ways that you can become wiser. All right. Number seven, which have no guide, no overseer or ruler provided her meat in the summer and gather her food in the harvest. So this ant right here, some of the things that we are to consider about this ant is that the ant does not have a guide. And, you know, for those of us that are trying to, uh, you know, go to different places, so a nice amount of our brothers and sisters today, they're they are thinking about going back to Africa, thinking about going back to the land. So whatever parts of, uh, you know, Africa that you believe the land is, some people are going more towards, um, you know, um, Ghana, sleep out for that, Ghana, some people are going towards Demona. Uh, some people are going in various other places where they feel like the most high is leading to, to the Congo, uh, to Gambia, different places that, that they feel that like the most high is leading to. All right. And I have been uh, even more open to the thought of going back home now or going back to Africa now than I've ever had before. I'm thinking about the wicked things that's going on in this world, not because of a, of a, that I'm marketing to a, a doctrine about fleeing because I believe the, the, the calamities are going to hit this whole world everywhere that's, that's around. Um, but when if I think about going to a place like that, I would need a guide. I would want a guide anyway. I know the Ruach HaKadosh is the guy who will lead you and guide you in all truth. But I would want the Ruach HaKadosh, uh, if it is in Yah's will, to lead and to have a guide for me. Or someone that can guide me when I hop off the airplane with my bags and, uh, you know, really don't want to go to the airport these days. But if, if it is Josh Will, you know, you hop off the airport with your bags, you got you and your family and things of that nature. You will want someone to guide you. Someone that can, that can help you be familiar with the area that you're about to, you know, plant your feet in and, and about to start, you know, starting a new life in. It will be, it will be important to have a guide. All right. Uh, so wherever you go, it's important to have a guide. But these ants, they do not have a guide. All right. That, but, but they don't make excuses, though. I'm, make, I'm, I'm giving you a reason why I would want a guide. These ants, they, they, they said the scripture said they don't have no guide. They don't have an overseer or a ruler. So they don't have a so-called moray, a so-called bishop, a so-called, you know, prophet, prophetess. They don't, they don't have a, a, a commander of a thousand over them, but they get up every single day and make it happen. We need to be considering the ways of the end. All right. So they don't have a guide. They don't have an overseer or ruler, someone that's telling them what to do every single day. They know that they have to get up and eat. They know that they need to do what they have to do to survive. And they know that they have to put aside a certain thing to be considering is that these, the, 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 the ants are a people that have motivation. The ants are people that are self-motivated. They don't need for you to give them an award. They don't need for you to give them an incentive for them to get going uh, about their task. All right, they don't have a guide. They don't have an overseer or a ruler. But still, verse number eight, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. So in the summertime, 
these ants are eating. I don't know how they gather the food that they gather. I don't know if the Most High has heightened their, their senses where they can smell things from a mile away and they know exactly how to get to it, but they make it happen. They have food for their household in the summer and they gather the food and the harvest. All right. So we need to be considering the ways of the ant. We need to be gathering for the harvest. We need to be providing food in the summer. One of the scriptures in Mishle, a proverb says, a wise son gathers in the summertime or in the summer. So this is the time. We're in the summer right now. It's time for you to be gathering if you can. And it's time to be putting aside something for the harvest uh, and gathering her food in the harvest. So you gather in the harvest, but it, but when that harvest is over, you're putting aside some for those slow months, those months that you might not be uh, bringing in as much. But let's continue, though. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 30 real quick. I want to I go, go over something else real quick. Like I said, this is not meant to be a long message. It's just something that I want to put a thought on your mind today as you go about your day-to-day -day journey, all right, considering these ways of the end. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 24. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the battle, in the summer. It said the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rock. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth, all of them by bands. The spiders take hold with her hands, and that's in the king palaces. I want to pay attention to number 24, though. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. These four little tiny creatures are considered wise in the book of wisdom. And, and, the, and the one that leads the pack, number 25, the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. So again, if you want to use that as an excuse that you are not strong, you're not valiant, you don't have all the physical qualities that some other people have to go out and hunt, to go out and gather um, your food. All right, this is for you right here. It said the ants are not strong. All right, the scripture also said, let the weak say they are strong, but the ants are not strong, but they still are going to make it happen. I want to go back to Proverbs chapter six, though, because something I missed out on. All right. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse number 9, it said, How long will you sleep, O sluggard? Because this comes right after the verses where it deals with the ant. It said, How long will you sleep, O sluggard? When will you arise out of your sleep? You don't have to tell the ants how to, and you don't have to give an alarm clock to an ant. They know they're up, they're out, and they know that they have to get this food or they have to go to their stash to eat for the day that's ahead of them. How long will you sleep, O slugger? Yet number 10, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth or travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. So that's what I wanted to throw back in there. If we do not follow or hearken to the, the ways of the ant, or consider the ways of the ant, then it can lead to us being in poverty. All right, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth or traveleth, and thy need as an armed man. You know, the armed man, because they are poor or are in poverty, they're going to rob someone. So we don't want to be bringing these calamities on ourselves by not considering the ways of the ant. All right. The ants, like I said before, they're not lazy. A lot of our people, we are very lazy. All right. Very lazy. You need somebody to, to tell you when to get up. When to go do this, when to do that. That's one of the things about discipline. I mean, about wisdom is that we have to be disciplined. Now, let's go to so it's the book of Sirach, chapter 29. I want to throw something in here real quick. The book of uh, Sirach, chapter 29. And we're going to go to uh, verse number 12. It says, I'm going to go to verse number 11. All right, because 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 we already know. Looking at the title, you can already know where I'm going with this. We're considering ways and you need to store up some things in these times that we're in right now. You have people that saying you don't need to store up anything. You just need to come back to the land. And everything is going to be okay. All right, I'm telling you this. I I, I got to listen to what the scripture says. All right, it said consider the ways and as they store up things. 
All right, so I'm telling you whether you under the doctrine that you have to go back to a certain portion of Africa or Israel, if you want to consider um, Israel part of Africa, all right, which, you know, many would say it's on the northern part. Uh, if you want to consider that, you need to be stocking up and storing up wherever you are at, whether you're in Israel, Africa, or are you in America, or are you in South America, whatever part of you know, Europe, wherever you're at right now, wherever you may be, that, that you may be looking at this video, make sure that you're considering the ways and end that you're storing up things. Why is it important to store up things, all right? Like I was saying earlier, if you don't know about the calamities and the things that's taking place in the society, you need to hurry up and get out of the cave, all right? These things are happening at a rapid pace, and they are making efforts to do, 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 to do away with coins, all right, do away with coins. You're starting to see what they're called a coin shortages in these stores. Now they're, they're only saying that a nice amount of places now saying that you have to pay with the exact amount of cash. All right, so what this is doing now, all right, they're, they're, they're ushering in. All right, this new world order has already been going on for a long time. It's already been in place. All right, but they are, they're ushering in things. To, to, to really put their stamp on this one world government. And one of them is doing away with currencies, doing away with cash and making a one world currency. And so these coins, once the so-called coin shortage is over with, they can print out as many coins as they want to. They're telling you that it is a shortage. So they're about to do away with physical uh, coins. Then they're going to be doing away with dollar bills. All right, we already know where America is. Their their economy is going down. All right, if you can't see that, then um, you know ask the most how to open your eyes up for that. So they're doing away with coins. They're doing away with dollar bills here real soon. And what that's going to happen? What's going to happen after this? It's going to be a one world currency that's going to be digital. Every single transaction that you make is going to be uh, monitored. You're not going to be able to hold a few hundred dollars um, in, in a secret place in your house or a few thousand dollars ducked away in a storage bin, uh, things of that nature. That money is not going to mean anything when they're done with uh, physical fiat paper money or, or coins. All right. I'm just to let you know. So this is why we need to consider the ways ahead. This is where this, this storing up thing comes into hand because there, when you don't take the vaccine, or well, some of you are going to take the vaccine, probably. But for those of us that are not going to take the vaccine, or that's not trying to get a chip planted in our right hand, all right, or in our forehead, or somewhere in our brain, somewhere, all right. For those of us that do not do that, they are succumb to the ways of the beast. Then you're not going to be able to buy or sell, all right. So at least. If you're already getting a hand start right now, you're already considering the ways to end. You're storing up food, all right? Whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Antarctica, Alaska, Asia, Europe, wherever you're at watching this video in South America, you know, store up some goods because I'm telling you, once you're not able to buy or sell, it will be good to at least have some months worth of food already or a year worth of food that you can be able to still eat from. Yes, you may not be able to go out and buy, all right, but you're still able to eat. You're still able to live for a temporary span of time. And of course, the Most High, through his miraculous provisions, of course, what he did to Eli, he provided him food in the cave. So you don't have to be really taking too much thought on how you're going to continue to eat after your supply runs out. But at least you're, you're trying to be wise and trying to store up for these days that are ahead of time. All right, let's go to Sirach chapter 29. Like I said, I don't want this to be a real long lesson. I don't want to be putting my own, uh, you know, too much of my own words and thoughts into this. So, right, chapter 29 and verse 11, it said, Lay up thy treasure according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall bring thee more profit than gold. That, that, that fool, once the gold is of no value, once the gold doesn't mean anything no more, that food is going to bring you more profit than gold. That water that you have, that's going to bring you more profit than gold, all right? Some of us are out here trying to buy land, that's trying to plant our own gardens, our own food and things of that nature, even though they're trying to destroy the crops as well, all right? So they have this thing covered on all cylinders, and they're working their plans to the T, but we can at least 
trying to be wise. We can't, you know, the most I may still tell you to get up and flee and leave all this stuff behind. But at least you are proving yourself wise. At least you are trying to operate in wisdom and considering the ways of the hand and put it aside. Verse number 12. Shut up thy arms in thy storehouses. What's a storehouse? A storehouse is a warehouse of food. All right. It says, shut up thy arms in thy storehouses and it shall deliver thee from all affliction. So when you shut up your food in your storehouses, in your warehouses of food, stock up and buy as much as you can. It only take, you know, 20, 30, 40, $50 a week to put to the side. If you may not have a whole lot of income to go and spend seven or eight, nine hundred dollars, a thousand dollars at every single time you go out. But at least you're doing something. Something. You're not just saying, I'm just waiting on the rapture like a lot of these Christians are doing. I'm just waiting. He's going to deliver me. No, you put an action towards it. You're acting towards your belief. Are right? you considering the ways of the end? All right. So right here, it says, shut up thy arms and thy storehouses and it shall deliver you from the, thy affliction. All thy affliction. So affliction is going to be coming on this earth. We are already under affliction. Those of us uh, that, that are a servitude to these Gentiles. We are already going through an affliction right now, but that affliction is even going to be greater. When you're not able to buy, when you're not able to sell, all right? You need to have something to at least give you some longer life. It may only add a, a few extra months to your life. It may only add an extra year to your life, but the most I can, can use what you have and he can multiply like the fish and the loaves. The most I can, can, he sees that you are working with something. He sees that you are trying to be wise. All right, you got the what, five wise, five foolish people are not storing up oil for their lamps. You want to make sure that you are storing up. Who else considered the ways of the end? I know we don't look at it as if this man considered the ways of the end, but Yosef, all right, down in Misraim in Egypt, him and Pharaoh, they had to consider the ways of the ants, which are the ways that came from the Most High. He told them to store up for seven years. All right, while you're still able to get plenty, while you're still able to work, while you're still able to do certain things, store up because the years of famine are coming. All right, and when this famine comes, and when the days of darkness hit this earth, if you are not prepared, if you don't have nothing in your warehouse, in your storehouses, all right, you're going to go through a greater affliction. So I just wanted to share this quick, short video with you today about considering the ways of the ant. I prayerfully pray that you can take this message more seriously, that you can use whatever resource that you have to be able to go and buy you more food, that you could be able to store up in these times that we're in. The ants are not lazy. You got people over here, they're asking people for help. They're asking people, you know, to keep giving, you know, give them money. You got people on social media, people online, that they're asking for money from different individuals. Okay, I can understand because we all come across hard times. We all come across ways. And for us as a nation and a group of people, we're supposed to bind together and help those people. But if an individual is lazy and they want to continue to ask, continue to beg without putting in the actual physical work, they are not considered as considering the ways of the ant. They're considered as being slothful. All right. The scripture says, go to the ant down slugger and consider their ways. So if you're one of those people that are being slothful, you need to pay attention to the ants. Go on your back porch. Go somewhere in your house. Go around your house. And just sit there and watch them. Watch them with a magnifying glass. Watch their accents. They're not standing still being lazy. They're always on the move. These ants are moving. And you and I should be moving as well. So with that said, if you like this video or any of the other previous videos that you have saw before this video, click that subscribe button. Click the bell button for the notification. Share this with other people that they can be enlightened on more of these wisdom messages. Until the next time we meet again, I pray that the most I be with each and every single one of you. Shalom, shalom.